So, you want to make a disco ball? Well, get on the floor and stay alive. Hey guys, welcome back to this by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender 2.8 Eevee once again, taking a look at how to make a disco ball. You see it here on the screen, right on, my le on the right hand side. I don't know my left or my right. I never went to kindergarten. So, uh, we have just literally three added nodes to the left hand side here. Now, we're going to go ahead and close this so I can open it on camera. Uh, this is what it looks like, you can see. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put our cursor in the top left hand corner of the screen and drag and then we'll just change this little box right here to the shader editor. Now you can see here we are hit in to get rid of that panel and now you can see this is this is what we have. So with this uh, disco with a circle selected I just hit shift A and added in a uh, UV sphere and then just hit uh, went to the modifier tab added modifier subdivision surface and then I bumped it up to like four or something and it looks like this now. Uh, very cool. So. The material started off with just this. As you know, this is what your well, maybe not exactly like this because you don't have metallic or specular. But yeah, it, it should look something like this once you're once you're done. Well, when, before you did anything, sorry, rather. Um, so this is what we have now. What I did was I went ahead and hit, I hit Shift A and searched for a Voronoi, uh, Voronoi uh, texture right there. And I just popped this bad boy right there, which happened to be this. Uh, this uh, node and I plugged the color into the roughness I believe it was yes I plugged the color into the roughness and as you can see we already instantly have this really really gorgeous looking thing but it's not very defined you can't really see the tiles very well unless the light is hitting it just perfect um, so yeah I turned the specular all the way up by the way let's turn that all the way up and might as well turn everything else down all right, so that's what we have, but it's not enough. I mean, it kind of is. It looks looks okay. It's not that bad, actually. You can probably leave it like this, and it'll be fine. Maybe just change the base color down a little bit to, like, a more grayish. That's fine, I suppose, but I want to take it a step further. So what I did was I went ahead, and I hit Shift-A, and I searched for a color ramp shader, which is this bad boy right here, and I, I plugged that down right here, and I plugged the color into the base color of the principal BSDF shader, and there we go. Now, the only thing I did was I changed this from black to dark gray instead of black. It was like that. I just pulled it up a little bit. Uh, so it was like that. And this is also just solid white still. So that's what I did. And then the only other thing I did was I just hit Shift D while holding the uh, Verona texture. I clicked this Verona texture and hit Shift D. Hit, no, not over there. You have to do it over here. Hit Shift D in, in this side. And then I just put it up here. Um, and I literally left the values the same, except I plugged the color into the factor. And I changed this from 3D to 1D. Now you can see the difference here on screen is quite big. You can see it when I have it on 3D, it looks like this. When I change it to 1D, it looks like that. I just really liked the depth that it brought. It's very subtle, as you can see if I unplug it and then plug it back in. It's very subtle. It slightly makes it a bit darker, and it does uh, give a nice tone to the uh, squares. So I really like what that did. I'm actually going to go ahead and darken this even more, a little bit, a little bit more rather. Um, and the, the, the piece de resistance is the metallic shader, the, the metallic slider. So if you can see what it looks like right now, you can see it, it, it looks okay, but it still needs a little bit more. So I just bumped in a little bit of metallic. Now you can go 100% with it. I like that. It looks good. Um, or you can do maybe like 50% or something, but I really do like the contrast of the um, 100%. So that's pretty much all I did for this disco ball kind of shader, kind of model -y thing, I suppose. And it does reflect, refract in the, in the light very nicely. You can change the scale of all these different uh, values, make smaller tiled disco ball, which looks very awesome as well. You can make a bigger tiled disco ball, which is a huge, 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 huge one. <laughs> um... And then, let me just put this, I think it was on, what is it, on 50? Let me do it on 80, actually. Yeah, I'll leave it on 80. It looks pretty good. I like that. I like 80. Um, and then this, as well, doesn't really change too much. As you can see, it's not really doing too much of anything. But like I said, it's just for the, uh, the, the color at this point. As you can see, unplug, then plug it in. You can see the color is very slightly changing there. So, it's just making everything a little slightly bit darker. Um, I'm going to put that back on 50. There we go. I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed today's tutorial. I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.